You are listening to Dove Valley Deep Divers with Eric Trickle and Lance Sanderson. Ball comes out of the hands of Newton. It's on the ground, picked up by T.J. Ward at the four-yard line. Vaughn Miller did it again. On Overtime Media. And we are live. We give John K, MHH, at John K, but want a beast behind the scenes. The thumbs up because we got our Facebook group, the Mile High Huddle Super Group, uh, the fan page on Facebook.com. Uh, Mile High, hello, everybody in Broncos country, and welcome into another episode of the Dove Valley Deep Divers podcast. I'm your host, Lance Sanderson, and joining me today is, of course, my good friend and colleague in Mile High Huddle senior NFL draft analyst, the one and only Eric Trickle. Now, Eric, uh, we were talking a little bit behind the scenes here. What's going on, man? How are you doing up there? Doing pretty good. Unfortunately, the weather is getting back to being terrible. We had that few days of good weather, and we have now officially hit fourth winter up here in Alaska. <laughs> Other than that, good. I'm excited to be here talking about football. We've got some big news today, which is always awesome to have some big news when we get around to doing the Dove Valley Deep Divers. Because, you know, typically we just don't get big news to talk about on the show. That's very true. We uh, it's been it's been a minute since we got some some real news to talk about. I think the last time we really got to talk about some big news was when Garrett Bowles got extended back in November. So it's been a while. No, it was it was my birthday actually. Oh, that's right, that's right. I and it has something that. to do with some with news today. So yes. ironic. We got to be there for the beginning, and we're here for the end of it. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. <laughs> Before we get our special guest on the show, we got to break down some news for you. A couple little pieces for you. Um, obviously, we just kind of hearken to it a little bit. The Von Miller situation, Parker PD actually came out today and said they will not be pressing charges against Von Miller. Now, Eric, what does that mean for Von Miller's future with the Denver Broncos? Well, the DA's office is the one to announce that. Right, yeah. will be. Sorry, um, excuse me. But it offers up a lot of versatility with what the Broncos want to do because – with it still in flux, with not knowing what's going to happen, other teams, if they were interested in trading him, that's going to pull them back. So now now maybe teams will have some interest, start making some calls, and maybe Denver can offload that contract that way. If they can't get a renegotiation or a restructure done then or an extension, some way to lower the cap in. They've made it pretty clear they don't want him back at the cost, but they do want him back. Right. So if, they, if that falls through, maybe another team – one big team that I think makes a lot of sense for him would be the Cleveland Browns, pairing him with Miles Garrett, letting him mm-hmm. teach Miles Garrett. They need another pass rusher. It's it's a win win for both sides, depending on what they offer and everything like that. We'll see what happens in the coming and probably the coming days, weeks. They definitely want to have it done within the next twelve days before the start of free agency. So same with Kareem Jackson. It's gonna be a little bit of time before we see that stuff get worked out, but or not that much time before it, that stuff gets worked out. But it's coming and. Uh, We'll see what happens for it, but guys, they want them both back. It's just not at their current cost. Right. Specifically to Von Miller here, and you actually sent us a very interesting message in our group chat about potentially restructuring and extending Von Miller, um, potentially dropping some of his base salary this year, what is it, $18.25 million or something like that, dropping, say, $10 million on that into a, a signing bonus, extending him for a couple of years, uh, the same kind of a J.J. Watt extension, that two years and $30 million range, something like that to, to prorate that out, uh, to drop his cap hit for this year, allow the Broncos some flexibility. Is that a feasible possibility now? It is. I think what the what happened with J.J. Watt, his deal with the Arizona Cardinals, I think that's a good basis if they want to go about extending him and lowering that cap hit, giving him something for basically this year, two more years, and then with the J.J. Watt deal, he has three void years after that to spread out the signing bonus. Now, you wouldn't need a, the three years with that, but you can do two years with Von Miller, spread out a signing bonus, give him a essential pay cut this year, but turn it into a, um, a a signing bonus. So he gets it right away instead of having to wait for it until the season. Yep. And it's the way he gets the money faster. I think it makes sense for both sides. We'll see what happens. And, I, again, I, I just think it's I think that's a fair deal. For the Broncos, I think it's a fair deal for Von Miller, and it gives them some financial um, protection going forward when it comes to Miller. Right. Uh, going to grab this here. Tyler Randall jumping in on Super Chat. I'm so happy we can finally get to work on getting our guys re-signed and that Vaughn will be a part of that group. Simmons, Vaughn, and then hashtag Pace Shelby, hashtag Let's Go, hashtag Vaughnster58, hashtag DB4L, and hashtag MHH4L. That's a new one, and I like that hashtag. That's great, uh, Tyler. Appreciate the the Super Chat there. And, yeah, th- this is this is actually starting to, to – 
work out well for the Broncos. Um, and also another thing here, they actually extended the window for the uh, for the Justin Simmons negotiation by placing the franchise tag on him earlier today, well, or at least is expected to, for him to to be placed on. What is? Do you have anything else for us on that, Eric? I, I'm not so sure that they'd take this out to the deadline. I've heard that they were really close on getting a new deal done and that the franchise tag is just a is just a way basically so they've got they've got a bigger deadline on Von Miller and Kareem Jackson. Oh wow. Okay. That's what the deadline is. So they've got they gotta get that figured out. So I think that they'll work on that, get that figured out probably over the next week, and then we come back to Justin Simmons. I think it was Brendan Crystal um who reported that he still kind of expects a Simmons deal to be done, an extension, by March 17th. So that's wow, keep an okay. Eye and again, I've heard it's really close. And if they don't get it done by then, this is they're, they're going to get an extension done. I'm confident in saying that they will. Justin Simmons will be with the Broncos long term, and the deal will be done sometime in the coming months. That, awesome. Uh, when you said that they potentially could get a deal done before March 17th, I did not think that. I figured that they would wait until potentially after the draft, after dropping that franchise tag on him, to give them a, kind of a negotiation period and extend that, give them some exclusivity on the negotiations and not let anybody else come and get him, um, work on that deal a little bit later while they're working on Vaughn, Kareem, and, and Shelby Harris. So to hear that is actually some some pretty good news, and I, I and- really appreciate you for dropping that knowledge. And in response to the the super chat here about the pay, Shelby got a little bit of unfortunate bad news, I guess. Um, with what it sounds like the market will be for Shelby Harris, I'm not sure he's back with the Broncos. Um, market is said to be somewhere about over ten million dollars a year. Ooh. I think that'll be a little bit rough for Denver to be able to afford that. I think they'll go with somebody a little bit cheaper, especially with Draymond Jones coming into his own and what they hope McTelvin Ajim becomes. So we'll see what happens there. It's something to keep an eye on. I'm not saying he's guaranteed to be gone, but it's just something to be a little bit cautious of. Of the free agents, of the two big guys, Shelby Harris is the one that I'm less confident in being back with the Broncos next year. Yeah, it, it, I would agree with that, especially with that $10 million mark. Um, he wanted $10 million last year from the sound of it, and he never got even close to that, uh, especially after DeForest well, Buckner got traded to the, yeah, to the Indianapolis Colts. That was the big thing that really kind of uh, stomped out that negotiation tactic for him um, because they were actually very interested, and $10 million sounded about right for him. Um, after that, his market dried up, and this year's defensive line class in the free agency period is a lot less than it was last year, especially because there's not a big trade ship like a DeForest Buckner that could potentially potentially be moving on. So $10 million for Shelby Harris, that might be a little steep for me. I would think six, seven, $8 million could probably get a deal done. And if he's willing to take that kind of a, a, a an average per year salary, I would, uh, I would welcome him back in Denver for that. Um, let's yeah, move- and Go ahead. Quick, I think you hit the nail on the head with it is with how the last year's defensive draft class and free agency class looked compared to this year. I think that it's a good chance that he gets it this year because it's just, it's a lot more dried up than it was a year ago. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, let's say hello to everybody in the chat here. We got Albert Knoppers jumping in here. I believe he's over – or no, he's in America now. I can't remember exactly where he's from. Um, anyways, jumping in on Facebook. Uh, we've got Bronco Fan 99 on YouTube. What's up, dude? Mundungus jumping in. The Wizard of Oz uh, – well, the Wizard of Bronco Land anyways. Uh, Dave Glassman saying hello to Albert. Uh, Bawana Beast obviously behind the scenes. Robert Kitchen in the house. Black Knight 232. He says uh, tag him on Twitter. Yeah, he, he actually said something about grading a uh, an ultimate. GM yeah, he asked how simulation. much it would cost to grade a GM simulation. I'm going to say since you asked, it's going to cost fifty thousand. Yeah, I, I I need I need the whole million guys. I got pre approved for a house loan today, so I'm definitely going to need everything. No, I'm just playing, guys. Uh, yeah, just tag us on Twitter, like yeah, any, any mock draft, anything like that. Just tag us on Twitter. We'll do it for free. Yep, you can find me at Sanderson MHH, as you can see on the screen here for Eric at Eric Trickle. Now, guys, we have a special guest that won a competition, a super chat superstar. You guys know him as the king of the super sticker. I'm telling you, this guy sends stickers to literally every <laughs> single show. Uh, it's not Dove Valley Deep Divers. It's MHI. It's the the BTB boys building the Broncos. Uh, Chad and Zach on the Huddle Up podcast. He is the one and only Muhammad Badri. Muhammad. What's up, man? How are we doing? I'm glad to have you on the show. What's up, man? Oh, I'm doing great. Thanks for the introduction. I appreciate. Yeah, not a problem, man. I appreciate you for joining the show. We're, we're very excited to have you on, man. Oh, I'm I'm excited too, man. It's uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, so a couple of quick questions before we get into this mock draft, man. First things first, where are you from? And and because obviously Broncos country is not a geographical location; it's a state of being. So where are you from? And how did you become a Broncos fan? Oh, so um, I'm I'm in Richmond, Virginia, 
Okay. Um, I did live in Denver for about about a year, back in two thousand eight. Um, I I did say tell this story before, but I was actually uh, born in another country. I liked soccer. Um, okay. Didn't know anything about um, you know football or anything. Uh, when I used to watch it, it just seems to me like people were fighting. You know, when you don't understand the game and stuff. And then you know, um, two thousand five was just when I started trying to understand because like I'm like let me see what everybody's talking about you know football and man it's uh, it's a lot of fun and you know um, it's kind of affected how I look at soccer you know because to me it's kind of boring now and I just <laughs> catch like the World Cup or something but man um, football is just like a chess game man it's a lot of mind games yeah so, absolutely. I love absolutely. it and I love the Broncos man Amaze balls. Hashtag amaze balls. That's yeah, but, yeah, the the wizard coming in here, Mundungus mm-hmm. Creevy with the five dollar super chat. Mo amaze balls, man. Yeah. Thank it's, you, it, Mundungus. It's, Eric, you got something for, for Mo? Yeah, I just wanted to get your opinion with all the stuff with, with Justin Simmons and Von Miller. Um what do you want to see kind of have play out when it comes to these two? Like, are you are you in the camp that doesn't really want Simmons to run long term? Because I know there's some Bronco fans who don't, or do you want to back long term? And are you? Do you want Von Miller gone, or do you find them bringing him back? Uh, well, with um, Justin Simmons, thank you, Betty. Uh, with Justin Simmons, um, you know, I'm glad they gave him the tag, the franchise tag, because um, I'm thinking the coaching staff is going to be gone next year, and if they go ahead and just um, you know get a new staff in and the scheme, the defensive scheme changes. Is Justin Simmons going to be a good fit if you go ahead and, you know, pay him? But then at the same time, if you don't pay him and then we try to sign him next year, it's going to be more expensive. So I think the best thing to do is um, just, you know, give him the franchise tag and see what happens. I would say wait a little bit. Um, when it comes to Von Miller, I'm, I'm glad the charges has been dropped. So um, now they can sit down and see if he would, he would be willing to restructure his contract, you know, um, what uh, what Lance said earlier about maybe uh, you know make it as a, a bonus in the beginning, and then you know that would definitely help our cap. But um, yeah, if we have um, Chuck and Von Miller on that line, you know they just make all these offensive teams just you know guess you know who they're gonna double team, and then if we can get that pressure in the middle. Now with Shelby, I think he's gonna be looking for money, so maybe he's gone. But you know. Uh, we have some youngsters, uh, Dreamlight Jones. You know, we got some people who you can get some from free agency or something. But yeah. I'm excited for that line. Yeah, they, absolutely, man. Now, before we get into this, I got one more quick question for you. What's up with the super stickers, dude? I love them. They're, they're so fun, and it's great to have uh, Bawana pull, pull them up and put them on the screen so everybody can see them. Uh, we, we actually can't see that stuff. When we say mm-hmm. that we can't see the, the stickers, our, our chat, you literally can't see those stuff. So what's what's with the super stickers? What drew you to that, and is and how did that become essentially your mantra as the king of the, king of the super sticker? Um, sometimes it's easy because uh, most of the time I might be at work you know, while I'm, you know, watching the show and it's kind of hard for me to type questions and stuff. And, and they're cute. You know, I mean, I like them. This, you know, it's just different expressions and stuff. And I like how you guys see that. So, yeah, that's, no, it's, that's, it, that's all about. Yeah. It, it's amazing, man. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy them. Every single time you put them up there, oh, I, I really wow. want to see which one it is Thank because it, it, it is like a guessing game. Is it is it the pair? <laughs> is it the Hello Kitty thing? Like, are you giving us a yeah. fist bump? Like, it, it's fun. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, uh, guys, we're going to get into this mock draft here. If you guys have any questions for Mo specifically, uh, Super Chat questions only, we'll, we'll get those in after we're done with this mock draft. Now, Eric, I want you to pull up your share screen here, and let's get this party started. Let's go. All, All right, so, so – uh, just a quick rundown. Um, Mo's going to be running the draft. He's going to be the general manager. He's going to rely on Lance and I to be the scouting department. For time reasons, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to do trades, although trades always make it more fun. And as you guys saw last week, it's how you really win at mock drafts and everything like that. Right, Lance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I really wish that I would have put a little bit more effort into that Thanks, because that. you blew me away, bud. <laughs> so we're going to come into the first round. I'm just going to read off a couple names here. Um, Trevor Lawrence obviously went number one. Jamar Chase, Penny Sewell, Kyle Pitts, Jalen Waddle, Zach Wilson, Caleb Farley, Justin Fields. Uh, Those are the first eight picks. So we're sitting here on the board at number nine. We got tra- guys like Trey Lance, Patrick Sertan, Rashad Slater, Devontae Smith, Micah Parsons, 
Najee Harris, Christian Derrissa, Jeremiah Wusu Karamora, guys like that available. So is there anybody in particular you're looking at or a certain position? Um, cornerback, so I guess Sertain. That would be my oh, – I wanted Farley, but he's gone, so – yeah, unfortunately, uh, Caleb Farley being gone in this particular situation. Now, I do want to point your your eyes in a different direction here and potentially bring up another uh, another need for the Broncos, especially considering the Juwan James thing. We know that uh, we know that uh, George Payton and Vic Fangio have obviously said that they expect Juwan James to be back, but still, there is that possibility that the Broncos could move on with him. What do you think about Rashawn Slater here? Uh, can you look at tackles? So Rashawn Slater, Samuel Cosby, Christian Derrissaw, Tevin Jenkins, Jalen Mayfield, those are all guys in the TDN's top 32. Um, who would you say is um, your top tackle? Here? So oh, of the guys who's left available, my top tackle is Rashawn, is Rashawn Slater. Uh, he's a guy who he's got great versatility to play inside or outside. Mm-hmm. I'm perfectly fine with trying him outside okay. first. If he fails there, then you have the option to move him in with the situation with Graham Glasgow and their contract and Dalton Reisner, and he's got two years left. You get you get two years with Rashawn Slater, and if he doesn't work out there and those guys are free agents, you can move him inside and have a replacement for them at that point. Um, if you want a pure tackle, then Christian Derrissaw would be my top pure tackle here. But I really like Rashawn Slater. I like what he can bring, and I think he can be a franchise right tackle and make a great bookend set of tackles with Garrett Bowles. Yeah, Definitely. absolutely. Yeah, let's go with Slater, and then we'll see if he if some corners back drops on the second round. I All actually, right. I actually like that here, especially mm-hmm. because there's some news coming out here, and we'll we'll break this down here a little bit for you as well. Um, Eric Stokes had his pro day earlier today, and it is a confirmed no. time for, or not? It was it not? It was, a pro day? H, it was an HOA. It was the HOA combine. Okay, so uh, apologies for that. Uh, anyways, he ran a uh, – I'm not sure if it was confirmed, but there is multiple reports saying that he ran a 4.2540 today. So the speed there, the recovery speed, the, the the scheme versatility and everything like that with Eric Stokes, a potential cornerback pick that you can pick, maybe get in, in round two here, um, not being able to see what other guys there are available right now unless I do a full screen here. Um, but let's see here. Uh, top available prospects here. You got Javante Williams. You've got Richie Grant, uh, Trevon Morg, the safety from TCU. Eric Stokes is available here. You've got Levi Onzerike and Alex Leatherwood, uh, the offensive tackle from Alabama. Jason Owe and Wyatt Davis. That seems to be about your top ten there. So, Muhammad, what are mm-hmm. you thinking here, buddy? Um, I like Grant, but I yes, think he's a cornerback. So, um. Because I'm afraid if we get Grant, then we don't get the best available cornerbacks. Okay. So I would, yeah. I, would, I would go with a cornerback. All right, I can pull up the cornerbacks. I'd say it's like I like this cornerback class and the depth of it, but this is one where the earlier I get, the more the more likely they are to be successful and have a higher um, a, a higher end up having a higher value and more bang for your buck kind of thing. Safety is one that you kind of wait a little bit. It's not as a, as much of a valued yes. position. And Vic Fangio has done a great job throughout his career finding good value at safeties later on. I mean, Eddie Jackson, Adrian Amos, the two in Chicago and everything. So the top available corners, there's Eric Stokes. He's my he's one of my top five corners. I really like him. I think he's worth the first-round pick. Asante Samuel, I'm not a big fan of him for Denver. I think he's more off-man coverage than off-zone. Yep. And I don't think he offers up great scheme versatility. If you're looking for scheme versatility, then Eric Stokes is the guy. Kelvin Joseph, he's another one who I don't think is very scheme versatile. And there's Elijah Molden. He's kind of viewed as a nickel only. He's got good scheme versatility, and he kind of has that mold of an ideal Vic Bangio corner. But, again, as you said earlier, not sure if Vic Bangio's here beyond this year. Mm -hmm. So kind of got to figure out how you want to look at it. Do you want the guy who fits the scheme? Do you want more scheme versatility? Do you want somebody who doesn't fit the scheme at all and then try to get them into a scheme that they fit next year? So a couple different options here and different, definitely different ways you can go. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, give me Stokes. All right. Eric okay, Stokes. Eric Stokes. That's, I love it. I love the pick. And, again, this is a, a very scheme-versatile kind of a guy. He can play an off-man. He can play and press a little bit. He also has the, the speed and recovery ability, as we just got done mentioning with that 4 to be able to break on the football and uh, be that kind of prototypical click-and-close boundary cornerback for the Broncos. I actually love this pick. This is this is very good job so far. You're doing a really good job, Muhammad. I, I appreciate this. Um, what do you think about the, the Broncos' edge 
uh, depth right now. And this is probably a need that is going to be addressed more towards the, the beginning of the draft. Obviously, you got the Von Miller situation worth monitoring. Um, Bradley Chubb is is going into, what, year four now? So you've got to make a decision on that 50-year option coming up here soon. Um, so the Broncos have some flux going on with that edge position. Do you think it's time to look for an edge defender here? Oh, I'll, I'll Jawari. That's why. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. <laughs> Like, but he's gone, right? Yeah, yeah. Ojolari's probably gone. Let's, let's yeah, look he at went, edge. Ojolari went with the thirty-second overall pick to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, looking at edge, you've got um, Deo Odeingbo out of Vanderbilt, who for me is more of an interior defensive lineman than an edge, or he's a guy who's basically going to be in a three-point stance in a four-three front. Not quite what Denver currently runs. Hamilcar Rashad, he's a guy who pretty good athlete, pretty good run defender. He's got decent technique. He seems like of a higher floor, lower ceiling type of player to me. Peyton Turner, he's another one of those guys that three-point stands, hand in the dirt, 4-3 end kind of player who can kind of move inside a little bit. And Quincy Roche, Jordan Smith, two very long athletic guys who can stand up out of that two-point stance and rush. And there was one guy I want to point out too. He's not an edge, but he's a linebacker. And we're, we're talking about him beforehand. And it's Jabril Cox out of LSU. Ooh, I just want to point out that he, that he is available. Jabril oh, I'm available. definitely going for Cox then. Yes. Yeah, I I firmly agree with you here on this one. Um, Linebacker is another huge need, and you could potentially wait on a Jordan Smith or a Quincy Roche to come to you in the fourth round. So, yeah, absolutely here. You take that value pick with uh, Jabril Cox, who, as we were talking about earlier before the show went live, is getting some round one conversation similar to a Patrick Crean, a, a late riser, potentially into the, into the day one, maybe early day two as well. The Broncos might have him available for him at uh, – um, the, the the 40th overall pick. Now, we're into the fourth round here, pick number 114 overall, and there's a couple of really good players here. A, a couple of players that Eric, I know, specifically really likes. In Trill Williams, a cornerback out of Syracuse. We've already taken a cornerback here. Um, Paris Ford, a safety out of Pittsburgh. That's another guy that I really like. Elijah Griffin, cornerback out of USC. Marvin Wilson, another one of Eric's guys, the interior defensive lineman from Florida State. And then, this is actually kind of a sweet spot here for the running back position because you've got Kylan Hill from uh, Mississippi State, and you've got Trey Sermon from Ohio State on the board here as well. So a couple of very intriguing options. Now, uh, Mo, what are you thinking? I'm actually thinking safety. Okay. Yeah, so um... – so on the safeties here, you've got Paris Ford. You're going to have Tariq Thompson from San Diego State, Talanoa Hufanga from USC, and James Wiggins. This is another one of Eric's guys from Cincinnati. Actually, Eric made a, uh, came up with, to us with a with a certain kind of a hot take here that James Wiggins wasn't even the best safety on the Cincinnati defense last year. No, Derek Forrest I thought was better. I mean, the big reason why is that Derek Ford – Forrest to me just seems so safe as a safety prospect because at the very least I think he has the skills to be a number three safety and contribute on special teams James Wiggins he has a higher ceiling but he's got some bad injuries in his in yeah. his uh, history here but if I'm looking at safety I'm looking at the guy who we both dubbed as a great replacement for Kareem Jackson that's Paris Ford out of Pittsburgh yep um I was checking out edges a little bit earlier and because you said you wanted to go one with the last one none of the edges that were available that that were still available, I really liked. Um, Janaris Robinson, I think this is way too early for him, in my yeah. personal opinion. Ade o- uh, Ogundeje, I think, I believe his name, can't quite see it here, out of Notre Dame. He's another guy who I think is more more into your defensive line, along with Cam Sample. And then Dalen Hayes, Rashad Weaver, Chauncey Golston. At this point, I think the better value on edge would be to wait until the next pick, see kind of what falls in place there with guys like Ellerson Smith or Patrick Johnson. And I do like the idea to go safety here. Yeah, me too, right? Safety or running back is the direction I'm looking at. Yeah, let's go with Ford, and then we'll look at edge on the next round. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Great pick here. Very versatile kind of a guy can play that single high center fielder role if you absolutely need him to better in probably a, a two man or a cover four kind of a role can drop down to the box. Very physical presence. Good tackler here. Um, and, and again, as Eric said, this is a perfect replacement for uh, for Kareem Jackson. I like exactly. Richie Grant that, as that role. That's who I that's my direct comparison. Uh, we stand Grant in this household. Hashtag we stand Grant. That's a big thing for me on Twitter. Um, but yeah, Paris Ford, if you miss out on Richie Grant, that's a that's a perfect replacement as well. And I love this pick so now we're at the at where are we at pick 153 and eric we have all the edge pulls up here we have rashad weaver from pittsburgh this is a guy i really like more of a four point stance kind of a guy chauncey golson same kind of a thing um jonathan uh jonathan cooper from ohio state eric what do you think about him 
I like Jonathan Cooper. Um, I kind of question exactly where you kind of play him. He's kind of a t- bit of a tweener to me yeah. for the NFL level, um, which I would work in a multi-front defense, which isn't exactly what Vic Fangio runs. And we don't know what's going to be coming in if Vic Fangio gets fired or anything like that. Of the edges that I am look- that I see here, Chauncey Golson really catches my eye. I love the power that he brings. He's not very athletic. And I think if you're going to pass rusher, you want to be have a guy who's a little bit more athletic. And mm-hmm. Ellerson Smith is the other name that really stands out. He's long, he's athletic, and he just he punished some tackles during his collegiate career and some pretty highly respected tackles throughout the draft process. Yeah. So, Mo, what do you think here? Um, Smith is interesting. So we got Bronco fan ninety nine jumping in here and talking about is Dwayne Eskridge still available? Because I've I've said this multiple times on this show and uh, multiple times even on Twitter. Uh, the uh, the Broncos are going to have some questions to answer with the in regards to the wide receiver position because Cortland Sutton's coming off that ACL injury. He's in a contract year here as well. Uh, Tim Patrick is a restricted okay. free agent and he could potentially be a trade piece. We can break that down here in just a little bit as well. So Tim Patrick potentially being on his way out. You have two of the top four wide receivers for the Broncos and now you have. Uh, uh, Jerry Judy and KJ Hamler, who both struggle with drop issues. If both Colton Sutton and Tim Patrick move on either this year and next year combined, you're a pretty, pretty big hole here. The wide receiver position is a sneaky need for this team. Yeah. Dwayne Eskridge isn't available. And I agree that wide receiver is a sneaky need, but it's one that I'm comfortable waiting on. Yeah. So Who's Muhammad, which way, which way do you think you're going to go? Who you guys like better Weaver or Smith? I like, I like Smith better. I think yeah. I don't think Weaver's the best fit, and okay. I have a I have a lot more concerns about Weaver being an effective run defender than I do with Smith. Yeah, it seems like he struggles with some functional strength in the running game. Um, he's got some good burst and good bend, and he's got some good length to him. But uh, if it's me, I'm looking at Ellerson Smith here, or I'm actually uh, looking at Shaka Tony, who has some versatility to potentially play some off-ball linebacker here as well. He's uh, getting really light. Smith. Smith Yes, Stephen Smith. All right. Okay, Eric, break him down. So, Ellison Smith, I, I really like his length. I like the athleticism he has. He's not the strongest of run defenders, but he shows a lot of potential to improve there. The technique is very – the technique seems to be what's holding him back to be a better run defender than he is. But I like – in I can't remember what tackle it was, but there was one tackle who ended up being a a top two top two round pick last year, I think it was, who he just completely whomped on. And just like consistently beat around the corner with his athleticism and kind of bullied. So I really like Smith. I like him. He needs a little bit of development. And I like what the Broncos have done with Malik Reed as a run defender, yeah. which gives me confidence that Ellerson Smith can be developed and get the technique down because that's how Malik Reed has improved. Is he improved the technical aspect of run defense? Well, he also seemed to be more confident from from the jump this year, and th- that was something that Benjamin Albright and Ryan uh, Re- Ryan Edwards had said on Broncos Country tonight multiple times that his first step seemed a lot more confident. He wasn't hesitating to to make his attack angles and to get after the offensive tackle. So if you can get Ellerson Smith in that same kind of a mold and help bolster this edge depth, because again, I mean, you've got. Von Miller, that situation, Bradley Chubb, but also Jeremiah Tautu, who was one of the Broncos' edge defender depth pieces, is was on a one-year contract. He's a free agent as well, so you're going to have to go and, and upgrade that position here as well. Now, we're at pick 193 into the sixth round. Um, and, and look at the, all the wide receivers here. You've got Marlon Williams from UCF. You've got Shai Smith from South Carolina. Uh, Josh Amaterbebe from uh, Illinois. Um, Simi Fito- I, I can't read that. Uh, Simi Fahoko. From Stanford, uh, Cornell Powell, a guy that I really like, is a versatile kind of a, a deep threat kind of a guy, can work over the middle of the field as well. Very solid, smooth hands, uh, catches everything thrown in his direction. Um, there's some there's some explosive potential with him as well. He blew up the senior bowl wide receiver here. Um, I'm also looking at Khalil Herbert, the running back from Virginia Tech. Yeah, so which way, which way, what position right at this point do you want to go? Well, and I, I can pull it up and look at it. You want to look at wide receiver? Mm-hmm. All right, so just a quick recap. We took Rashawn Slater ninth overall, Eric Stokes at 40, Jabril Cox at 71, Paris Ford at 114, and Ellerson Smith, the edge, out of one at 153. So there's a couple guys here that, I mean, obviously Lance talked about, but there's a guy who's a little bit later on that I want to talk about, and let me see if I can are you looking for, find him. Are you looking for Dax Milne? No, I'm looking for Marquez Stevenson. So this is a guy who at the HOA Combine, he really blew it up. He's very fast. He's very explosive. He can work inside or outside, so he has that versatility to kind of bounce back and forth with Judy and Hamler 
And depending on what you're doing here, and he adds a lot of speed to the Broncos offense, yeah. which is an element that I still think they're lacking just a little bit of. Um, what, and then uh, Lance had mentioned Khalil Herbert. If you wanted to look at running back, another one would be Jarrett Patterson. Yep. Um, and then Jalen Darden and Kate Johnson, those are two smaller smaller wide receivers, similar to KJ Hamler that provide a lot of explosive. And then Shai Smith, if you're looking for somebody to be kind of reliable, finding the soft spot in zones, making the catch, and just helping you move the ball downfield, not exactly be explosive, then I, I really like Shai Smith out of South Carolina for that. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. <laughs> So, Mo, what do you think? What do you guys think about Williams? Is Marlon he Williams? Mm-hmm. He's – so if you're looking for somebody to um, kind of replace what you're getting out of Tim Patrick, Marlon Williams is a solid option for that. He's a guy who can be a deep th- uh, somewhat of a deep threat with his size. He's not overly fast, much like Tim Patrick is. He's, he's tough, and he's t- willing to take hits over the middle to secure the catch. Hands are very solid. Routes do need a little bit of work, but Zach Azani – He's shown what he can do to develop route running with Cortland Sutton and Tim Patrick both. So I like Marlon Williams here, and uh, he he can fit if you're moving on from Tim Patrick. I I totally agree with that. They're actually very similar kind of a players. Um, Marlon Williams has some some really good length. He's, what, 6'3", I think probably 215, so some height weight, not really a height weight speed kind of an option, but he's got some length that you can work with, and if you're really looking to replace that Tim Patrick level kind of a player, this is a good fit. All right, let's take Williams. Okay, Marlon Williams it is. Marlon Williams it is. Um, Now, Mo, we're at here. We've got the offensive tackle, cornerback, linebacker, safety, edge, wide receiver. What other positions of need do you think that this Broncos team has that we can potentially address in this draft here? Running back, I guess. Running back? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about uh, potentially replacing something on the interior of the offensive line, like a a guard prospect, a a swing guard that can play both sides, maybe even jump outside of the the tackle position, or a center guard combination? Do you think that the Broncos could improve their their depth there? Definitely. How many picks we got left? We have three more picks. Three more picks. So I have the running backs up right now. Uh, Rakeem Boyd, he's he's just a solid guy to me. He's a guy who every time he touches the ball – as a runner, he's 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 going to get you like three, three, three and a half yards almost every single time. Every once in a while, he'll break off one for for a few more yards than that. Not very explosive, um, decent versatility to be used in the passing game. Elijah Mitchell, I really like. I like his versatility. C.J. Maribel, he's a guy who, if you're replacing Lindsey, I really like C.J. Maribel to replace what you get out of him. I think he's faster and more explosive than Lindsey is, and he's I think he's a little bit tougher between the tackles than Lindsey is as well. Spencer Brown, if you're looking for a bigger back, I mean, Spencer Brown, he's about 230 pounds. He's not overly fast, but he's big. He will uh, use his size very well to pick up yards. He'll punish defenders. He's hard to tackle uh, above the waist. And uh, really good not, a lot of, not a lot of receptions, but he's flashed there with some big plays. And then there's one more. I'm just going to real quick see if he's still available. I think he's already gone. Um, yeah, he's already gone, but there's a guy out of Cincinnati too that I would talk about, but yeah, he seems to already be selected. Spencer Brown here is a very intriguing option to me because he's, he's a potential replacement and this is going to be a developmental kind of a guy, but he's a replacement for uh, Royce Freeman, who's on the last year of his deal. Um, the Melvin Gordon situation still needs to, to play itself out before we really kind of take a look at that uh, and say whether he's going to be here or gone. But uh, again, a bowling ball kind of a runner, very good balance, a very patient runner, um, very tough to take down. You got to wrap up and drive and bring your feet with you as well. Um, very intriguing option to me here, but I think we could probably wait. But we are in the seventh round, so if you want to take some flyers, Spencer Round is definitely an option here. Um, we got a question here about the interior of the defensive line as well. Uh, Mo, with, mm-hmm. with uh, Shelby Harris in that situation, um, Demarcus Walker being an unrestricted free agent, potentially there's a couple of pieces that need to be replaced. Obviously, Jarrell Casey's already been released, so this is another area of need for the Broncos. Um, I see Mustafa Johnson is available as well. Um Taquan Graham, it may not be the best scheme fit. Lorenzo Neal would be a decent one there. Um, Eric, what else do you think here? I like Taquan Graham if you're looking for a guy with a run defender and try to develop his ability as a pass rusher. Um, Mustafa Johnson, I wish he was a little bit longer. If he's a little bit longer, we're probably talking about him in the fourth or fifth round. Um, He can definitely shoot the gap. He's a one-gap defensive lineman. Um, Lorenzo Neal, if they didn't retain Mike Purcell and he was on his way out, I could see that same with Jordan Scott out of Oregon. And everybody else are guys that I'd be looking at at the earliest as um, 
uh, undrafted free agents. One guy, though, Zionde Johnson, I just want to mention him. He's not a guy I'd be looking at here. This dude's like a billion years old. He's been playing for California for like seven years now. <laughs> All right, Mo, where, where are we looking at here? Um, I'll, I'll go for Graham. Taquan right. Graham here? Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's see back. If- Let's see we're if we're back uh, on the clock. Yep, we're back on the clock here. Let's see if uh, if uh, Spencer Brown is still available. Yep, Spencer Brown yeah, still Spencer available. Brown's... No running backs were taken. I mean, we just had a pick. There was one pick between them. So, Mo, what do you think? There is another option here about uh, taking a look at the cornerback position. I wonder if t- if uh, Thomas Graham Jr. from Oregon is still here. Yeah, let's look All at right. the cornerbacks. All right, you got Tay Gowen, who I think is probably going to be more of a defensive back um, instead of a boundary corner. You got Marco Wilson. He kind of had a disappointing year. A lot of people were talking about him being a top uh, top three round player, but kind of uh, disappointed. Manny Ragamba, he's a cover three type corner, not exactly a fit for the match quarters. Trey Norwood, not as impressive as his teammate Trey Brown, but his teammate's already gone. Um, Robert Rochelle out of Central Arkansas, if you want to take a guy with with upside Brian Mills out of North Carolina central. He's one, if you're looking at moving on from Vic Fangio and moving to a press man scheme, I would really bet on Brian Mills's upside here, but he's one that's very scheme dependent, not exactly scheme versatile. Um, Every Williams for a guy to give you an option for your nickel corner replacement for Bryce Callahan. The, um, the one, the one that I want to just shout out here really fast, because I think he's a perfect fit as well, just because of the, the defense that they play in Georgia is DJ, Jan, D, DJ Daniel, who played very well against Clemson a couple of different times. Um, or not Clemson, uh, Alabama, uh, sorry, excuse me on that one. Uh, uh, Yeah, DJ Daniel, uh, not the greatest athlete. I think that there's something that he's going to have to work on. Um, His hip fluidity isn't quite there, but as a developmental option for you, DJ Daniel fits this scheme, and there's some versatility with him as well. He can play some man. So there's a few different options for you, Mo. What are you thinking? Uh, I think I'll go uh, cornerback. I like Ty Gowen. Is that his name? Yep. Take going. Oh. Which that 2019 UCF secondary was in legit insane. They had Aaron Robinson, Richie Grant, Tay Gowen, and the other safety they had is a pretty solid one as well. He this wasn't draft good. eligible, I don't think, this year. I don't I think so. I think he is name. next year. Yeah, and but he's yeah, gonna he's, be he's gonna be probably a third or fourth round pick at least. Yeah. I, I don't remember his name, but he's very smooth, very fluid, a good athlete, can play um, can play in the, in the cover two, can play in, in the single high safety role as well, versatile. That UCF secondary is very fun to watch. It's a pretty good draft so far. It is a very good draft. You were doing yeah. absolutely fantastic. Now we're on the clock here, 248. This is the last pick. Uh, so, Mo, you, we've lined out a bunch of different options for you. We're going to let you take the reins and, and kind of run this down and, and get out of here. So what are you thinking? Um, inside linebacker, I guess. I mean, not inside linebacker. Um, D line, so interior D-line. defensive line. Yeah. Uh, Lorenzo right. Neal is still there. Jordan Scott's still there. Um, we are Aubrey Herring. Time. He's 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 an interesting one that fits in with what the Broncos want to do. Yep. Um, let's see um, here. We haven't touched running back, and there's still plenty of options here. Yeah. So there's still this, running backs. With running backs, this could be a one at this point where. There's enough. There's enough options here. With, in my opinion, with Elijah Mitchell, Dedrick Mills, C.J. Maribel, Spencer Brown, um, Trey Ragus, Larry Roundtree, Mackay Sargent. There's enough mm-hmm. options here that if you wanted, I can totally understand going and waiting until uh, undrafted free agency, getting a couple guys cheap. But then, of course, you have to compete with other teams. Um, I like so Mitchell. running back Elijah Mitchell. Yeah. All right. All right. Sounds good. Elijah Mitchell, the last pick for the Broncos here. This is a, a fantastic draft here uh, from you, Mo, and we appreciate you once again for joining us on the Dub oh, Valley Deep Divers podcast, man. Um, to recap this here, we've got Rashawn Slater, the offensive tackle out of Northwestern. Uh, Eric Stokes, the cornerback out of Georgia. Jabril Cox, the, the linebacker from LSU. Paris Ford, one of my guys, the safety out of Pittsburgh. Ellerson Smith, the edge out of Northern Iowa. Uh, Marlon Williams, wide receiver from UCF. Uh, Taquan Graham, interior defensive line from Texas. Uh, Tay Gowen, a cornerback, an upside, high upside cornerback from UCF. And Elijah Mitchell, the speedy running back from uh, from Louisville. Now, Eric, if you were no, Louisiana, to, or, Louisiana, sorry, I, it, it was all glitched out on on yeah, my yeah. end. I'm sorry about that, uh, Eric. What do you think of this? This is actually pretty quality, man. Mm-hmm. 
I, I like this draft. It definitely sets the Broncos up with versatility going forward. And if you're if you're going with the mindset that Vic Bianchi is not going to be here next year, you want that scheme versatility. Yeah. Rashawn Slater, Eric Stokes, Jabril Cox, Paris Ford, Ellerson Smith, Marlon Williams, Taquan Graham, Tay Gowen, and even Elijah Mitchell. They all have really good scheme versatility with with, with what they want with what Thank you me. can do with them. And then position versatility as well. Rashawn Slater being able to play inside or outside. Role versatility with Jabril Cox, Paris Ford. And Ellerson Smith. Ellerson Smith is he's pretty solid dropping into coverage, so you can use him that way as well and be creative with your NASCAR packages. And I like the I really like the potential that you got with your seventh round picks, particularly Taquan Graham and Tay Gowen yeah. with the upside that they have. I really like uh, Taquan Graham's ability as a run defender, and he does have some flashes as a pass rusher. It's just got to be more consistent and get the technique down and pairing him with Bill Kohler, working having him work alongside Draymond Jones. Like you can really develop that, and then take going again. At this point, is you can kind of take a shot. I think that the Broncos will add another corner in free agency. Not yeah. sure who. And so at that stage, you can take a risk on a high upside guy this late in the draft. And if you have to, you can probably stash that. Uh, probably stash him on your practice squad for a year or two. And then with him, you also have the versatility to move him off of um, off corner and into a safety position, into into a safety role. Really like this draft. You did a good job. Yeah, this is an amazing job. Let's pull away this screen share and get Muhammad up so everybody can see him here. Um, Mo, first off, what do you think of the draft? And obviously, we think it's a, this is a high quality, probably an A plus draft. Um, Miller seven hundred seven champ agrees with that. The first four Thank picks you. are at least an A plus. Um, what do you think? How do you think you did? And uh, any extra thoughts on this before we we turn you loose? Oh, I really like the draft because um, I honestly think. Vic Fangio is gone, you know, and the way we, we went through the draft is very versatile in case the scheme does change in the future. So we're not putting ourselves, you know, in jeopardy because uh, we, we pick somebody specifically for his scheme and then he leaves. So, yeah, I, I really like the draft. Yeah, it was a it, it was a lot of fun to have you, Mo. Mm-hmm. And again, the king of the super sticker guys. We're gonna turn you loose here, guys. Make sure uh, let's let's pull this comment off so we can get uh, um, Muhammad's uh, Twitter handle here. Follow him, guys, on Twitter at Broncos two thousand and five. Mo, we appreciate you for joining us on the Dove Valley Deep Divers podcast. As always, appreciate the support and everything you do for not only us, but for every single podcast and reading all the articles, commenting as much as you can and and, and engaging in the conversation on Twitter as well. You're one of my favorite follows because I just enjoy the the, the content that that you put out there and your opinions and everything. And you're you're down to earth kind of guy. Again, thank you very much. We will see you later. Uh, Jump back in the stream, comment with everybody else. We'll catch you next time, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for your help. Yeah, not a problem, man. You have a great night, man. We'll talk to you later, okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Then there he goes. Then, guys, that is Muhammad Badri again, the the king of the super sticker. That's his new name. And uh, every time that he throws one up there, I'm going to shout it out just exactly that way. And great job again, Eric. Once again, thank you for that. Uh, great job to you for for all of your breakdowns and stuff like that. Got some super chats here. Black Knight 232 jumping in here saying that we should do these mo- these fan mocks once a week. Uh, they're fun, man. It's it's a lot of fun to get some outside opinions and and kind of help guide some of these guys. Eric, what do you think? We, it, we've got a plan situation. It out, but we might be able to sneak one of these in uh, again before the draft. I think we can sneak one in probably beginning of April ish. Um, I know we're looking at getting a couple guys on and doing an interview with them and everything, but uh, guys that I've reached out to and everything like that, they're unavailable or are unable to for that day for some reason. So I think that probably right around hmm, April 9th or so, I think we could probably get another one in. We'll talk about it behind the scenes and everything like that and come create more details. Probably the way to enter would probably be the same way. Um, over a certain amount of weeks span, everybody who super chatted will be entered to win, and then it would be a random draw, and we'll reach out to you. Um, so, yeah, it's just that's the way to do it. And um, Jesse comes in and says, hey, guys, with the $5 donation, Jesse, and we appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. Uh, appreciate it a lot. He says, hey, guys, I want to send you my full mock via Twitter. Some highlights are a trade back with Bears. We get Horn, Cox, Grant, first three picks. Hashtag state of being. Um, yeah, just feel free to reach out to us on Twitter. I'm My DMs are always open. I may not get back to you right away. Or if you want to send it publicly, like feel free. I'm, I love sending, um, reading mock drafts, and it's not hard to reach out to me. My Twitter account is at Eric Trickle. Very easy to remember. It's just my name, C-K-E-L. That's the only, that's the only things that seem to be a hiccup because – 
my parents were weird and decided to give me a CK at the end of my name. Yeah, well, I was going to say that Eric <laughs> with this CK and Trickle, yeah. T-R-I-C-K-E-L. Um, yeah, but also, again, reach out to me as well, at Sanderson MHH. Again, last name with MHH at the end of it. Very easy to remember, guys. Uh, let's see if we can find some draft questions before we get out of here. We got about 13 minutes left, but we can definitely run a little bit long if we get some more of these, uh, some more comments as well. Um, Todd Ossendorf coming in here. Eric had a laugh when I su- suggested uh, Nazareel Dean. You not a fan of Nazareel Dean, Eric? Uh, I don't remember laughing about it. I'm I'm not super high on him, but it's nothing against him. I think that he just has a very certain role and fit in the NFL that doesn't have um and doesn't have much versatility. That that that's my only thing with him is I don't and I don't I'm not a big fan for him for Vic Bangio. But uh as Muhammad reiterated, is like we're not sure if Vic Bangio is here next year. Yeah, and that's a very true statement. Um, I actually got an article I need to finish up before we, uh, before the end of the night. Maybe I might get it to get it to the tomorrow, but, uh, Vic Fangio and George Payton held a press conference yesterday and they, they were actually talking about the chemistry that they have in their working relationship. So we might pump the brakes on Vic Fangio being out the door following the, the 2021 season. However, um, there is always that possibility that George Payton wants to move on and bring somebody else into more aligns with his vision, even though it sounds like they, that Vic Fangio and George Payton are seeing eye to eye on most things. Now, CeCe, jumping in here, thoughts on Greg Newsom. Um, high quality guy, perfect scheme fit, a um, little bit grabby at times. Um, I, I like the hip the hip flexibility. He's a really good click and close, decent athlete. Um, not necessarily sure on his size, though. Uh, I think that there's some, some length limitations for him. Um, and also, I'm not sure about him as a tackler. He's, he doesn't bring his legs very often. He does dive a little bit and wraps up very well, but he doesn't bring his legs and oftentimes can get ran over just a little bit. Eric, what do you think? I really like Greg Newsom. He's in my I top three corners. Oh, wow. Holy cow. I, re- I really like him. My big concern, what's keeping him from being cornerback two for me, and uh, well, a little bit more on this a little bit later, but you guys will have a chance to see my top ten boards here in the near, very near future. Um, we'll plug that in here in a little bit, but uh, – He's sitting at cornerback three, and if he, he – just the one concern that's keeping him from cornerback two is he didn't play the best competition. He right. dominated what he played, which is a great thing to see, but when he, – he didn't play against Ohio State, and that was a big one for me. I was really wanted to see that matchup. I think he ended up being hurt for it or uh, just decided to opt out and not play in it. I can't remember exactly which, but that is a concern for me with Greg Newsom. It's one that doesn't mean he's going to fail, doesn't mean he's going to be a success, none of that or anything like that. It's just something to be a little bit concerned about. Yep. No, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, who's a good round two edge, and should the Broncos draft one in round two from Robert Caslow jumping in here? I'm going to take this one first. Um, Jason Owe is a guy that I really like, a uh, freakish level athlete. I don't remember the guy's name, but uh, they, they called him one of the top freaks of this NFL draft. Supposedly, Jason Owe runs a 4.3840 at like 255 pounds. This guy's a phenomenal athlete great length great explosion uh good leverage good uh, speed to power ratio um can drop back into coverage just a little bit i really like jason no way if you can get him at number 40 to, as a potential uh, future for a von miller replacement because i think that he has that kind of a dynamic ability as an edge rusher that's a guy that i'm looking at there um What's the the Oklahoma? I always forget the Oklahoma. Ronnie Perkins. Ronnie Perkins, probably uh, not a round two, but day two kind of a guy. Um, You've got George Smith out of UAB. You've got uh, Carlos Basham, Boogie Basham from Wake Forest. That's a guy that the Broncos have some connections to down at the Senior Bowl. Um, They also have a very good connection with the Wake Forest coaching staff. See uh, one Essang Bassey and also Justin Sternod. So they they have their eyes on some of those. And Kendall Hinton. And Kendall Hinton. There you go. An undrafted free agent from Wake Forest as a a quarterback turned to wide receiver that actually had to start a game this year, as we all know. Um, yeah, there's there's a, a couple of different uh, edge prospects that Broncos can get on day two that would really fit well. Eric, what are, what are some other names there? Uh, well, you got Victor Dimukaje out yep. of Duke, who I'm not sure is the best scheme fit. Patrick Jones out of Pittsburgh, I really like him. But there's some life concerns, and there's some concerns about him being able to hold up as a two-point stance rusher. Um, and Vic Fangio, he really likes his guys to run out or rush out of a two-point stance off the edge. Um, maybe we can see somebody like Gregory Russo or Jalen Phillips fall. Yeah. I know I'm higher on Gregory Russo than you are. Um, but in the second round at pick 40, I think it's a fair shot to take on him and bet on his upside. Jalen yeah. Phillips with his medical stuff, cause he medically retired due to a concussion. Um, that second round, that's something that maybe I could take a risk on depending on how other medical stuff checks out. 
there's a lot of options. This is a really good edge class, guys. It is. And there's talent throughout all seven rounds of it. I mean, I know that mock draft Muhammad, we um, ended up taking Ellerson Smith in the fifth round. Yeah. I think it was. And, but, I mean, there's guys later on, like William, William Bradley King. There's Joshua Kando. There's Jamar Watson. There's a lot of edge rushers in this class that can provide you a good variety in whatever you're looking for. Yeah. And speaking of the edge department here, Pugo Reborn jumping in here with a $5 super chat. Thank you for joining us, Pugo. We appreciate that. Uh, Quiddy Pay on the trade back, AMC to the moon with a bunch of rockets and diamond. And I'm thinking that's a fist bump. Uh, Quiddy Pay to me, uh, I love the player. Don't get me wrong. And I, I appreciate you for bringing him up here. Just not a scheme fit to me. I think that he's more of a seven technique defensive end with his hand in the dirt. going to play on the inside shoulder of the, the offensive tackle, use that length and strength and the speed to power that he does have. However, if there, if Vic Fangio wants to sign off on him as a guy that could potentially uh, play in a two point stance, like Eric had just said, um, he wants his guy, his edge rushers to play in a two point stance and have the ability to drop back into coverage. And I haven't seen that with Quiddy Pay. Um, he is more of a, a down lineman a, a probably a 4-3 defensive end more than a 3-4 outside linebacker and yes those are two different positions and so is a 3-4 defensive end compared to a 4-3 defensive end technique and alignment so we have a great episode about that a few months ago if you want to check that out um, explaining defensive technique alignments uh, let's see here Todd Osendorf jumping in here saying that I would take uh, Sertan if Farley is gone. Yeah, that, I mean absolutely I could I could definitely see the so need there however we- uh, I would rather trade back. One thing that we keep talking about is we keep talking about the scheme fit with Vic Biancio. And something that we have to re- have to factor in, too, is scheme versatility. With Quiddy Pay, he doesn't exactly scream scheme versatile to me. If Patrick Sertain is there at number nine and Caleb Farley's not, he doesn't fit with Vic Biancio runs, and he's not very scheme versatile. So you got to go get a defensive, ske- uh, defensive coordinator who runs a press man scheme to use Patrick Sertain to his best. And I think that the value of trading down just trumps that. Maybe the Broncos see more in him in his scheme versatility than I do, but uh, I, I, I'm not sure that the Broncos are picking at nine in the first place. And if they do, I mean, it, they can go so many different ways. Um, it doesn't have to be corner. They could really go best player available. It could end up being like a Rashawn Slater or a Christian Derrissaw. They could surprise the world and decide that um, Colton Sutton, they have some inside information about his injury and go receiver with moving uh, – Tim Patrick, they can really shock it and really disappoint a couple of us at Mile Edel and just go running back at nine. I don't see it. I think they trade down. That's what it really comes out to. I think they trade down. And when you're looking at fits, you got him. You, you, basically, the best bet is look for scheme versus style guys. Yep. John Houston came in with a dollar ninety nine donation, um, which we appreciate, John. Thanks, You've John. really become a a stud for uh, the Valley Deep Divers, you're in here every week making a couple two dollar donations, and we really appreciate that. He says, yeah, "Any man. chance we trade for Darnold for pick forty? I think it would take a little bit more, and I think what you're looking at is Carson Wentz's trade. I think that's kind of what you're looking at with Sam Darnold. He's younger, he's healthier, he hasn't had the high moments that Carson Wentz has, but the youth and health are a big deal there. So I'm thinking like a second and a future third that can with a conditional future third um, with the Broncos. If the, I wouldn't be surprised if they make a trade if they not if they make a trade, if they are targeting Sam Darnold, if they decide to try and throw in like Alexander Johnson or Philip Lindsay or more likely yeah. Tim Patrick and try to get that deal done, not giving one less um, uh, one less pick and using the player instead. Uh, Robert Caslow, isn't there an edge who got medically retired? Um, yeah. Jalen Phillips, he medically retired due to a concussion and decided to come back. He uh, once he transferred to Miami. Um, part of what it is wasn't just the concussion or the concerns about it was because of the coaching staff there and he just wanted out and which is why he came back as soon as he was able to transfer through. But that's just a rumor that hasn't been able to be confirmed. I like him. He really stepped up his play this year, but just want, you just want to be clear with the concussions and everything. That's not going to be a big issue. Yeah. I've got a couple of comments here that I want to, to grab in tandem here. Actually, uh, Gavin jumping in here with our second favorite uh, profile picture that, the smoke and Drew Locke photo is just amazing, man. This is such a good troll. Love it. Uh, sorry, boys. I had to work. You're going to rewatch the stream. Hey, we appreciate you for joining us anyways, even even though you get here late. And we appreciate you watching after the fact. And for always, always for your support uh, and, and 
making the dub alley deep divers tick, man. If it weren't for you guys that are that are jumping in here and making comments and, and getting into the conversation, dropping super chats, uh, we appreciate every single one of you. If you weren't if it weren't for you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And I don't think that people actually say that nearly enough. Now, these two questions that I want to get, well, two comments, so a question and a comment behind it. Uh, Richie Rich jumping in here. Who is your top two small or D two uh, small school or D two players, and what round do you think they go in? And Todd followed that back up. Was Zayvon Collins could be a good player to groom behind Von Miller. I know some on Mile High Huddle have said they don't see the fit, but he can get to the quarterback. He's worth bringing bringing in, I think. Um, Eric and I have differing opinions on Zayvon Collins. I think that there's some coverage, uh, some lacks in coverage. I think he moves better forward than going backwards. Um, he's not great against the run, and I did go back and watch him. You're absolutely correct. There are some times where he doesn't scrape very well, but I see him getting out into the flat and moving forward more than moving backward. Um, that's a good guy. Now, Eric, what about another uh, small uh, small school or a uh, division two player um I, i'm terrible at knowing divisions um <laughs> that, that's probably that's probably i i can't tell you what division two is i can't tell you what schools are what so um I, I really can't it's one thing that i've just never bothered to learn i mean i i, I evaluate the players i don't pay attention to what school they are what's i don't pay attention to what conference they're in or what division I have a hard time telling you what conference they are. I can't even tell you what the conference is that the Iowa Hawkeyes are in. I can't tell you. I know Oregon's in the pack simply because my boss at work is an Oregon guy. Um, I, I think Utah's in the pack. I know Alabama's SEC. I know that. <laughs> like, I, I'm terrible with those, man. So, you, you, uh, so small school guys like Central Arkansas, like a Robert Rochelle. Uh, Robert uh, Rochelle, Northern, Brian uh, Mills. Uh, North Dakota State would be like a Dylan Raddins, a Trey Lance, um, uh, Caden, uh, not Caden Stearns. Why did I say Caden? Uh, Caden Johnson, uh, the wide receiver from there, um, uh, like a Wyoming guy uh, that there's not a Wyoming guy in this draft that I would even think about touching. Um, well, Zazavian Valaday, if he's available, that might be an intriguing day three or potentially uh, University of Delaware. There you go. Uh, anyways, Zazavian Valaday, day, day three undrafted free agent, kind of a guy, good vision, good balance. Um Decent receiver as well. I, I might take a look at him. Uh, no, it, just anybody from those smaller East kind Carolina. of schools that you can think of. Yeah, there you go. East Carolina. That would be a – Dante Smith. There you go. There you go. Uh, this, tackle option, long and athletic, has good power. There you uh, go. Dante Smith. The uh, the Northern Iowa offensive tackle. And Spencer Brown? Is, that's the one. Yep, Spencer Brown. That's that's another one that would be a, a good guy. Potentially a day two guy as well. The Broncos could probably get him in round three and develop him as a as a starting right tackle behind Juwan James or maybe even st- uh, take over day one as a starting right tackle and develop and create a very good bookend. Good length, good athleticism, gets out in front, very mean as, as a run blocker, solid pass sets, good athleticism. I like the kid a lot. Um, so I want to go back on and touch on – on Zayvon Collins a little bit. I really don't know what you're seeing with the concerns in coverage. Like he he's loose. He's fluid. Um, there's some, there's some spots in zone where he needs to better learn his landmarks. Um, he's not a guy that I trust in man, just cause I don't think he's fluid enough to mirror in that way. Uh, but the run issues I think are very poor. I have a lot of desire questions for him coming up against the run. Love him as a pass rusher. I'm just not sure he's a full-time pass rusher in the NFL. I'm um, just not sure he's a full-time off ball. He needs, he needs a front with multiple or he needs a defense that runs multiple fronts. Yeah. Yeah. And I agree with you. The, the landmarks thing and dropping back into the zone coverage, I see the turn and run ability and stuff like that. It's just uh, understanding his depths and getting the drops, hitting his landmarks and stuff like that is, is the things that I, to me, for me to say that he is not a, a great mover moving backward is not necessarily the greatest way of me saying that. It's just the understanding how to get to the, get to his depths and hitting his landmarks is the thing that I have a, a concern with. Um, Todd Osendorf, who is your sleeper pick to become the breakout player from the last two drafts on the Broncos? Ooh, this is a good question. Uh, sleeper pick from the last two drafts. Justin Cernod. Let, let's just go that way. Uh, Justin Cernod, coverage linebacker from Wake Forest. Uh, it, he was injured this year, didn't play at all. He was put on injured reserve early, early, and the Broncos have a need at the coverage linebacker position. This is one that I think that the Broncos can definitely um, improve, and to have that versatility, the ability for him, um, he's not necessarily the greatest in the running game because he is slight of frame. Um, so more 225, 235, kind of that area as far as his weight goes. Uh, but he's got good length, and that's something that you really kind of need to have as a coverage linebacker is longer arms and the, the ability to to turn and run with somebody and reach your arms out and, and break up passes that way. I, I like I like uh, Justin Sternot as a, a potential breakout player for that Broncos defense. Um, 
breakout player, uh, Kythro Draymond Jones. Yeah, you like, I, I think yeah. he's going to have a huge year this year. I think he really stepped up. Uh, I think being healthy, I think being a starter, I could see him reaching double digit sacks this year. Well, he had seven last year. He was the second highest total on the team uh, in a rotational role, and they won. But, but, but is he a sleeper pick to be that? Though? I don't know about sleeper pick, but it is a good potential possibility that he is a breakout player. In fact, there was a lot of us here at Mile High Huddle that that dubbed him a breakout player, um, even in the uh, um, even this year, the, to as far as a rotational player behind Jarrell Casey and and Shelby Harris. But when Casey went down, they really kind of had to play Draymond Jones a little bit more than they wanted to, and he played very well. And he grew as a run defender. Like, let's not sleep on his ability to, to defend the run and play some two-gap as well. Like, holy cow. Uh, that was something I didn't necessarily see with him, was the ability to play two-gap and hold up it at the point of attack in the running game. And he did very well in that aspect. So if it's not that's not a sleeper one, if that doesn't really qualify, I'll say Tyree Cleveland. I think he'll go. find a way to contribute on special teams and everything. Not enough to really be a star, but show that he belongs in the NFL. Uh, Gavin Holt jumping in here back again on Super Chat. We appreciate that, Gavin. Uh, will Aziz Ojolari fall to the second round? Um, Depends this, on his length. I like the length, though. I, I, I do. I like the frame. I like the, his, his, the frame that he has to bulk up because I think he's a little bit light right now, and he has enough of that functional strength, even though I think he is a little bit light. I'm, I'm guessing probably in the, the 240, 245 area. Um as far as that goes, but the the length and the athleticism and his ability to convert speed to power and the bend around the edge, I don't necessarily think that Ojolari is going to fall to the second round. I think he might be a top twenty pick, even with thirty two inch arms. Yeah, if he's thirty two, then I don't know. That's about that. what that's what's yeah. being said. Really, that's why that's why I'm concerned about it is the is the lack of length. That's the only reason why. Um, I didn't want to grab this because Todd Osendorf answered his own question with I would answer my own question with Nathaniel Moody, yeah. and I just have to ask. Why? Because he's not he's not going to start. The, there's like, there's so, a, so I'm, there's, I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious why you're saying Nathaniel Mooney. I don't see him starting. Um, I don't see him getting a starting role unless somebody gets hurt. He was a guy who he was drafted to be a project for three years. So the one thing that I will rebut on that is the development of Lloyd Cushenberry and his ability to play at the center position. And if you can think that uh, that Natani Moody is going to be better at that right guard spot and slide Graham Glasgow down into the center position where he might be a better player for this Broncos offensive line, given the the scheme fit there. Um I, I can understand that, but I also have those questions. Is is that an actual true possibility? Um, I think Natani Moody has a, a lot of high-end upside. He was potentially a second-round pick if he wouldn't have had all those injuries. He had a knee injury, and I think a torn Achilles as well when he was at Fresno State. So there's there's injury concerns there with him, but th- there is a definite possibility and a conversation to be had there. Um, I do want to grab this really fast here from Robert Caslow. Um A couple of guys actually answered this question. He says, what is an RFA? And yes, it does mean a restricted free agent. Now, Eric, what does restricted free agent actually mean? And can you elaborate on that for him? So there's a lot of people think there's three restricted free agent tenders. So what it means is that you just don't have the qualifications, the current seasons in the NFL to be an unrestricted free agent, which means that the team that has you, they have some control. So there's really four tender levels. And a lot of people don't realize this. So the first one is you have a first round tender level, um, which means that you get hit with that. If somebody signs you away, the team like with the Broncos say they tender Tim Patrick with the first round, they can either match an offer from another team if it's offered, or they can let Tim Patrick go and they would get a first round pick in return. Same thing with a second round tender level. Then you have an original round tender level. And this is where it kind of becomes a little bit tricky with there really technically being four tender levels. So original round is if they tender Tim Patrick with a – if he was drafted in, say, the fifth round with an original round tender, somebody signs him away, Denver doesn't match, then they get a fifth round pick for it. But he was undrafted, so they can't tender him with an original round. All they can do is tender him with the right of first refusal, which means that if somebody goes to sign him, they can sit there and say, no, we're going to keep him back on that deal. And Denver gets nothing in return, which is why for undrafted free agents – who get hit, get tendered, it's always better to over-tender them, throw that second or first round tender on them, and then if you don't want to keep them, throw them out to the trade market. Yep. That's that's always the better way to go about it with that. But that's what a restricted free agent is. Mohamed Badri comes in after having a really good good draft with us today, says with a $2 donation, with the fist bump and fist pounding uh, uh, super, super sticker. sticker. And So Lance, I'll let you go ahead and call him the 
the, he is the king of the super stickers, man. They, they, I swear to God, Muhammad always jumping in here with the super stickers. I appreciate that. Uh, Stu, what up, Stu? Holy cow. This is a mile high huddle Mount Rushmore kind of a guy here, guys. Uh, the, the, probably the, the George Washington face for mile high huddle uh, Mount Rushmore. Jumping in here with a $10 super. What's up, dude? It's been a minute since you've been in the chat. It's good to see you, man. How you been? Uh, let's see here. See if we can't grab another one. Uh, there is Another one here I want, to, I want to grab real quick. Okay. Kevin Hall said Eric Stokes running a four two four. You can say this Eric is stoked about Eric Stokes running a four two four. Oh, I see what you did there. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, Miller seven oh seven champ coming in here with a question. We've got if we lose Tim Patrick or Philip Lindsay and get a second round pick for them, do we get that pick this year? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I think it's, it's the year. Yeah. It's that. It's that year. So if Denver t- tenders them with the second round tender or a first round tender and somebody signs them wait, you get that pick in that current year. It's not the year. It's not the following year. Yeah. Uh, yep. Uh, no, you're, you're absolutely right. It took me just a second here. Uh, Black Knight jumping in here with a $5 super. I tagged you guys. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I got you. Uh, I tagged you guys. Don't worry about the price on the free agents. I got it. It was just random numbers I put together. I'm wondering about my draft and free agency grades. This is the the GM mock draft, uh, the GM mock that he did. Um, it, was that on fan speak or was that on the pro football network? I can't remember where that's actually at. It might be PFF as well. Uh, let us know. And, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll, we'll get you on Twitter uh, on that as well. Um, and real quick before we get out of here, Eric Stokes definitely plays fast. I don't know if it's four two four fast, and especially with pads, but he plays really fast on the field. And um, from everything I heard, is people were expecting about a four three four to a four four forty from him. Yeah, and that that sounds about right. Um, the the recovery speed of him and his ability to turn and run and and have that long speed down the field is what really draws my eye to him. The scheme versatility as well. Um, four two four, four two five, whatever it might be. If it's in the four twos. Yeah, he's jumping up boards. Um, he's probably going to be quarterback three for me. Based on that, I'd put him over uh, J.C. Horn. Um, could potentially even be quarterback two uh, for a certain mile high huddle analyst. And he might also be in this room. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, guys, that's going to do it for us on the Dove Valley Deep Divers podcast. Uh, you- where am I at here? Uh, Going to do it for us on the Dove Valley Deep Divers podcast. You guys can follow us on Twitter. Find me at Sanderson MHH and for Eric at Eric Trickle. And guys, while you're at it, follow at DVDD underscore pod. It's the easiest way to keep up with what's going on with Dove Valley Deep Divers podcast. Uh, also at Huddle Up Pod. That's a podcast network. The greatest way to keep up with what's going on with the Huddle Up Podcast Network, including building the Broncos, Mile High Insiders, and of course the Huddle Up Podcast. Also, guys, at Mile High Huddle uh, for instant news and analysis on your Denver Broncos, including all of the breakdown of the George Payton and Vic Fangio press conference from yesterday. Uh, Guys, if you're on Facebook, facebook.com slash mile high huddle, click the blue, become a supporter button. Um, Eric, what do you got coming for the, uh, the Facebook supporters here? So now's the time to come become a Facebook supporter. You guys, not only do you get access to Calverman's corner, I have a new show that's coming out probably here in the next week. Not sure on title yet. We'll get back to you on that. But become a Facebook supporter and you'll get access to that. Up until the draft, I'm going to be breaking down my top tens at each position and why they are ranked where they are. So, again, make sure you go to Facebook.com slash Huddle and become a supporter there. Yeah, absolutely. This is the content that we all live for here at MileHighHuddle.com. Also, Kelberman's Corner drops every Sunday at noon Mountain Time. At noon Mountain Time, Kelberman's Corner every single week. Um, guys, also... If you're looking to get one of these Dove Valley Deep Divers hats that I have on right now, there's a Dove Valley Deep Divers t-shirt. Uh, anything to suit your fancy, huddleuppod.com, get your merch. That's the merch tent. There's there's hats, there's t-shirts, face masks, hoodies, coffee cups. There's a onesie for your baby if you want it. I've got a new t-shirt here as well as I'm seeing. I think John is adding that to the stream. Let's see here. I'll have him grab that. Anyways, uh, yeah, the the new Mile High Huddle short sleeve T-shirt, great new logo for for anybody that wants to support the brand. Um, if not, if you guys are not in a financial uh, uh, possibility to be able to do something like that to help to sh- support the show, the three easiest things that everyone should be doing at this particular point. I've been shouting this out for a long time. Subscribe wherever you guys are watching this or listening to this podcast after the fact. Subscribe to Mile High Huddle, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Spotify, Apple Podcast iTunes, wherever it is. Subscribe to Mile High Huddle. Like every video you guys see. And if you love it, share it. Share it out and get it in front of as many Broncos fans as humanly possible. Drop a five-star comment as well if you if you would like to do that. It's the easiest and most organic way to help 
uh, support the show and grow our audience to get to as many Broncos fans as humanly possible. Now, Eric, before we get out of here, do you have any last words? Yeah, actually, I just wanted to answer one quick question from Todd Ausendorf. Says, are Pro Days a replacement for the Combine? No, Pro Days happen every single year. And this year, the Combine is still happening, guys. It's just not happening in the way that we've come to know and love. They're doing a bunch of smaller Combines, limiting people who can be there and everything like that. So the Eric Stokes times and all this stuff, it wasn't a Pro Day. It was the HOA Combine. There's other Combines, just smaller, and Pro Days aren't a replacement for it. Pro days happen every single year, and it's just it's just this year's a little bit different, just not the normal combine. But yeah. no, it's not a replacement for it. Not quite uh, a that, no, no other comments. Thank you guys for all tuning in. Thank you, Mohammed, and congratulations for winning it. Um, and you had a really good mock draft. It was nice getting to know you a little bit and uh, putting a face to the name, so to speak. And uh, yeah, we're always glad to have you on the show or at, in the chats and everything like that. And um, keep doing you and have everyone else have a good night. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Hit us up on Twitter at Sanderson MHH for Eric at Eric Trickle. Also, shout out to Boana Beast at John K MHH. Follow him on Twitter as well. Thank you for what you do behind the scenes and running the running the super chats, running all the comments and whatnot. Shout out to Muhammad Badri for joining the show. You all stay safe and take care. Have a great rest of your weekend. As always, go Broncos. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week.